Hi everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to take a photo of an athlete, hopefully somebody with arms or legs extended and do a partial cutout. So in the end, it's going to look something like this. So I've got a few photos that you can use in the Google Drive. I also have the written instructions. So if you're interested in, you know, looking at the direction, sometimes I think that's helpful too. Um, but let's just jump in and get started. So the first thing we've got to do is we've got to duplicate the background layer. So on a PC, it's the control button. On a Mac, it's command, but um, control or command J, like jump, will copy that background layer. So I've got two copies of it now. Now I'm going to add a new layer in between. So down at the bottom of the layers panel, you'll see something that looks like a little piece of paper that says new layer. So I'm going to click on that. And I want to fill it with white. So what I would do is hit the letter D to default these colors back to black and white over here if there's any other colors selected. And um, you can also, oh, I'm just going to see, uh, you can click on these little arrows to switch those around. Um, so I'll say, okay, you can get your paint bucket if you can, you've got to find the gradient tool so it goes from light to dark looking and then there's your bucket tool and if you click on it it just fills that layer with white so now i'm going to drag that down in between the two layers so it looks like a sandwich so you've got the background layer and then you've got white layer and then another copy and this is just the it's the just in case things fall apart layer okay now let, make sure you're selecting the top because we want to choose that we're going to select him from his background. We want to get the marching ants around him. And the easiest way to do this in Photo P is let's look at this quick selection tool. You know, sometimes the quick selection works great. On this photo, it wasn't working for me. It's not allowing me to select him. So I'm going to hit Command D to deselect that. And instead, I'm going to go to Refine Edge. So Refine Edge, I'm going to click the white button because that means everything I click is going to add to the selection. And as I click on him, you can see over here, this is what I've got so far. So I'm just gonna kinda buzz around and get him selected. And it's just kind of a matter of tracing around. And remember, if you go outside of the lines, don't worry about it too much because you can click on the black box at the top of the screen and take that part away. So I'm just going to do this a little bit quickly. And, you know, you can be as neat and tidy as you want. It's better to be, honestly, nicer with this selection than probably what I'm doing. But just kind of want to show you how to do it. All right, so getting all that. And like I said, if I discovered that I went outside of the lines, like on his arm, all I have to do is click on this black button. And, and with my bracket keys right next to the letter P, like Paul on the keyboard, I can take make that smaller. And the black button kind of removes parts of the selection. So I can get in there with a pretty tiny brush and just clean up the edge. Same with over here, just kind of clean it up. If you're really, if you've got somebody with hair or fur or something and you wanted to um, go along the edge to clean up um, hair, that's the gray one. That is called refine edge. And what it's gonna do is just kind of smooth out that edge. And it works great for hair and stuff, but actually it, didn't, it kind of fuzzed it out a little bit if you feel like it's, taking away too much, just come back over that part with the white brush. So it's just a matter of kind of messing with it and making sure you didn't miss anything. And I'm gonna go around his helmet a little bit closer. So you can speed through this part if this is taking too long to watch. But anyway, there we go. All right, probably, probably good enough. All right, so I'm looking at this picture over here. He looks okay. Now, the cool thing is you can um, export this as a new layer, and that's what I would do. Just hit new layer and say, okay. So now what we've got, I'm gonna turn the background layer back on, but or if I hide it, you can see, oh my gosh, that is, <laughs> this is kind of a bad looking selection. But, all right, we're gonna just move on. Um, 
I'm going to step down onto this background layer right here. So one, the one right above the white piece of paper, you need to be here. So your cutout is on the top layer. Then this photo is on the next. So get down onto this layer. And we're going to go grab the, the rectangle selection tool. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to draw, I'm just going to drag out. Oops. Let's try that again. Click on this tool right here. And I'm going to draw a box around him. Now I want part of him sticking out of the box. Now I have not let go of the mouse. And I think if I hold my, my shift key, I mean my, my space bar key, uh, I'm holding down the space bar. Um, I can move that around. But as soon as I let go of the mouse, I, it's, it's done. So I'm just going to scoot it over. I want part of him sticking out of the box. Maybe more like, maybe like this. Okay. So when you've got that, you let it go. And we're going to add a layer mask. So down here on the, the bottom of the layers panel, it looks like a rectangle with a circle. It's called raster mask on photo P. Oh, look at that. He looks better. Okay. So here we go. We've got him cut out. So his arms are extended out. His helmet's coming out of the box. He's, he stepped out of that box. All right. Let's go down to effects. So let's go down to special effects and let's add a stroke line to this. We want this stroke line to be on the inside of the box rather than the outside. You can drag the size slider to see how much, whoa, 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 whoa too much. I want a kind of a chunky stroke line, so that looks pretty good. Um, everything else looks great. If you wanted to change the color of it, if you wanted a red line to match the photo, that's fine. For me, I'm just going to leave it black and say, okay, and then say, okay, to this. All right, you're almost done. Now, this layer is selected. Hold shift and click on the top layer. So they're both selected. And then come of control or command E like elephant will merge those into one layer. Now we're going to do one last thing and we're going back down to effects and we're going to add a drop shadow to it. Now the directions over here, I have to look at it. Um, they give you some, some idea of like opacity, 60, angle to 120. Let's see what is that. Um, so let's see, angle. Let's see angle again. One twenty. Let's see what that looks like. I think you can kind of mess with it. So opacity sixty. We kind of had that already. Um, angle. And then distance. I think was a five. It was kind of a small one. I think it depends on your photo. I want probably a little more shadow than that. So you can. You can play with that. And if you want to change the angle to something else, you can do that too. But um, anyway, yeah, let's change that back to 120. Okay, that's it. You're done. You add a little shadow, you add a little stroke line, and you are done. All right. Well, I can't wait to see what you can do. Good luck.